morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning is Warren Unsicker, who is the new director, the chief executive officer of Four Corners Economic Development Service here in Farmington in San Juan County. Warren, welcome. Thank you. Warren, you've been on the job uh, for uh, two or three weeks. You started on January 3rd, and um, so you're learning a little bit about our community and uh, the region that we live in. What are your first impressions? Well, so far I've been very pleased with what I've found and uh, excited to see all the assets that we have in the community. Uh, a lot of great things in Farmington in particular, the parks every two miles, I believe, is what I've learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Civic Center and the library are all very impressive. So uh, very pleased with the community assets that have been put in place for the community. And uh, um, likewise, uh, the natural na assets that you have here in the area. Yeah. So the, We do think we have a number of assets that uh, can be uh, attractions to economic development and we try to to um, uh, take as much advantage of those assets as we possibly can so Absolutely. I think you've noted uh, those assets that's a good thing mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be util utilizing many of those uh, uh, features of the local community and trying to sell economic development here in Absolutely. our community I'm sure well the purpose of having you as our guest this morning is to introduce you to sure. Uh, the people of San Juan County and Farmington who, who watch the mayor's table. And so I'd like for you to talk a little bit about uh, where you've come from most recently. What's your most recent job? Sure. Um, my most recent position was as vice president of economic development in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which is just southeast of Tulsa. Uh, my role there was uh, community development, retail development, uh, commercial development. We did things like a conference center in that community that's going to attract a 40,000 square foot conference space and uh, over 175 room hotel. Um, we revitalized our downtown, which I understand is something that you all are in the right. midst of evaluating as well, um, which has resulted in exponential return on investment for the community. Um, we've seen uh, tens of new businesses come to the downtown core and millions of dollars in private investment and we view that as a workforce development tool and we've seen companies utilize that when they're attracting young professionals to an area um, to take them down to the downtown that we've created and use that to keep them and attract them to that area. I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you about downtown redevelopment because I was aware that you had that experience mm -hmm. and uh, We've been uh, having this discussion in Farmington for many years, and, and we've been making some progress here more recently, and we have some plans uh, that we want to accomplish. So I think your perspective from a different area will be valuable Good. as we move forward. So we'll be interested in talking to you about that. Absolutely. Um, where'd you get your education? Uh, well, actually in California, Santa Barbara area. Okay. Uh, and uh, then did you have any work in economic development prior to Broken Arrow? Yes, actually. My, my start in economic development was in uh, rural Indiana, in uh, Wabash County. Um, and I uh, did anything from industrial to agricultural. You know, we had ethanol plant projects that we uh, looked at and, and things of that nature. So in fact, just as I was leaving, they were finalizing an ethanol plant. So um, that was my first foray into economic development. And then uh, in between there and uh, Broken Arrow, I worked in Tulsa and headed up their entrepreneurship programs of uh, a small business resource center that they had there. Um, I launched the SourceLink program, which I don't know if you're familiar with, it's by the Kauffman Foundation. Um, it uh, brought all of the resources in the region together into one place, which I was very pleased to find that that's been accomplished here in an actual physical format, whereas this was more of a digital uh, uh, format of bringing everyone together. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was another asset that was encouraging to me to show that uh, so many of the business resources are in one place and easily found for uh, anyone looking to start a business or grow their business here in the community. Sounds like you have a broad base of experience in economic development. Uh, relatively young man, so uh, you've got a lot ahead of you as well. Absolutely. We're hoping that uh, San Juan County and Farmington is uh, a place where you can expand your your footprint. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to, to uh, some very good things. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the business of economic development. Sure. Um, uh, we've been focused on it in San Juan County for many, many years. Mm -hmm. We don't have much in the way of assets in infrastructure. Uh, we don't have a railroad. We're not uh, on a navigable waterway. We don't have a major airport. We don't have a major interstate. Uh, those are one of those things you generally need sure. in order to be able to, to recruit effectively, uh, recruit new business. 
When we talk about economic development, we talk about different components. Recruitment is one of those things. Mm -hmm. Retention, expansion, Absolutely. another. Business startups, it's still another. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the strength of economic development really lies in our area based on what you know with not much background <laughs> about the area? Sure. Uh, with, with the what I've gleaned so far, um, because of the industry base that you have here, I think you have the opportunity to build into those industries by providing customer base for them, uh, potentially providing and bringing in businesses that are going to utilize the products and services that are already being produced in the area and currently try being exported. Um, there's opportunity there, I think. Uh, I think that uh, bringing in location neutral businesses is going to be key. Uh, businesses that don't necessarily need to be able to export a physical product or good, but can export something digitally or um, or go along wires, you know, be, even if it's electrical uh, export. Um, so I, I think there's definitely some opportunities there. Um, healthcare is another one that we've, uh, I believe, been working on as a community here in San Juan County. Um, things that don't require a lot of distribution logistics to accomplish. Um, so no, I think there's still opportunities. I think that we just have to make sure we are going after the right opportunities and not, say, trying to attract something that requires that very heavy distribution logistics until we've established the resources that we need for the, to utilize those businesses. Yes, so. Where do you think the potential really lies here based on, again, on your very mm. uh, brief time in the position? <laughs> um, and I guess I, I would focus somewhat on the facet of recruitment of new industry right. to, to an area. I maintain, and, and this is uh, something that I maintain after 10 years of being involved in economic development in San Juan County, mm -hmm. that it's very difficult for a small community without some of the kinds of infrastructure mm -hmm. that major communities have to recruit new industry mm -hmm. to the area. You have to have a very sound economic development policy at the state level and the national level in order to be able to do that effectively mm -hmm. at the local level. Do you see that as a huge challenge in the recruitment side of economic development? I see it as something that needs to be worked towards. I, I think that there definitely are some ways we can grow that sector, um, be it uh, taking advantage of the airport that we do have in Farmington and finding ways to expand that or um, uh, look for opportunities to bring businesses that could utilize that as a, uh, an asset. Um, I think that um, it is something that does need to be built into in order to reach new levels of attraction, um, but I don't think it completely precludes us by any means. Um, but it, it does tighten our focus in the meantime until we can build in some of those things. I know rail's been something that's been talked about for a long while in this area uh, to try and bring that to export some of the raw materials that we have here. So um, I, I think it's just, it's a strategic focus that we have to evaluate and, and to your point, it's something that's a strategic disadvantage on some levels, um, but something we just need to be aware of as we move forward. So. I find myself being uh, somewhat frustrated by the recruitment process. It <laughs> seems that generally what we do is we react mm. to inquiries mm -hmm. that come from the outside. Generally, they come through the state. Sure and they're anonymous. We don't know much about those who are inquiring. Yeah. They want to know if we have certain amount of space or land. Sure. And if, if we do, we can submit that information mm -hmm. through an intermediary at the state. Right. And we never have the direct connection with the uh, industry people sure. who are looking to relocate. It seems to me that it would be much more effective if we were able to have employed at 4CED a person whose job it is to go out mm. and actively, proactively search out these opportunities and sure. to make direct contact with, with the business generators, with entrepreneurs, with Absolutely, industry yeah. representatives. Am I wrong about that? Not at all. And one of the things that um, I, I'm very involved with the International Economic Development Council, which is kind of the accrediting agency of uh, uh, economic developers, and meeting with and building relationships with the site selectors, those intermediaries you spoke of, is crucial because they're the ones that are connected with these industries when they're ready to make a decision. And the more familiar you are with them, the better uh, they're, you're going to be positioned when they have projects come to their table. They already have a cursory understanding of your community, what assets you have, what you don't have, and they can then 
quickly narrow you down to that short list uh, that they can then put in the hands of the business itself. Um, so that's something that I, I look to try and accomplish here in the, the near term is start building those relationships with site selectors. Um, likewise, it is a targeted recruitment effort, um, looking at industry sectors that you could um, go to trade shows or bu uh, business consortiums and talk to those businesses and see what their expansion plans are. Um, likewise, it's talking to the headquarters of businesses that we already have um, to find out if they're in expansion mode or attraction mode and what their plans are for the future. Um, because again, a lot of times we don't even know what's happening until it's already happened. And that's not where we want to be from a strategic standpoint. So. I'm going to be very much interested in that process and looking uh, forward to understanding how we create those relation relationships with site selectors. And uh, um, I just think that that is really where we have to focus some of our attention going forward if we're really interested in recruiting new industry. Absolutely. We'll get lucky every once in a while and we'll have uh, uh, we'll have an industry find Farmington, San Juan County, right. Northwest New Mexico, uh, offering what they need. Mm -hmm. But I would like to be able to think that we could uh, have more successes in that regard. Sure. I think retention and expansion are, are strengths of ours mm -hmm. locally. Uh, I think that we do a good job of providing services for uh, our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Startups are, uh, I think we have a strong startup program too. So I'm, but I know that we can improve and we're looking for fresh eyes on those, sure. uh, those parts of the process as well. Uh, I want to move back a little bit to the more personal part of your sure. life and <laughs> make sure that our viewers uh, uh, know a little bit about your family. Uh, sure. Do you have a family who I do. has come with you to Farmington? Yep. My wife and two children followed me out here from Tulsa. So we're, it's a good uh, thing they followed you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad they did. Uh, how old are your children? Uh, three and six. And uh, your oh, wife's name? Nikki. 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 Well, we yeah. want to welcome uh, Nikki and your children to, uh, to Farmington. I think you'll find the the school system to be a, a good school system and uh, uh, we, we get positive comments about that from those who are looking to relocate into our community. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you on board. And, um, I'm happy to be here as um, well. Before we close out this segment, do you have anything else you'd like to tell our viewers? No, just I'm excited to be a part of the community now and uh, looking forward to doing what I can to bring in the businesses and the jobs and uh, to bolster the economy as best I can for wonderful area. So, Warren, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank and you. Uh, we'll look forward to a lot more contact with you and a lot more discussion. Absolutely. I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning on the Mayor's Table. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs>